Hello guys, it's Mako here and today I have a video for you about tips and tricks in Darwin Project. There's a couple of them, 15. Enjoy. So, the first we have uh, this a bit of a trick. So, you can dodge the nuke by going to a forbidden area. So here's a video for you how to do it. So basically you build a fire on the forbidden area, I mean on the nuke area and like really close to the border of forbidden area and you go to the forbidden area once the nuke wave comes in. So you are in the area of the campfire and you don't get cold in the forbidden area and that's how you can dodge the nuke. That's pretty amazing. Because if there are guys waiting for you at the borderline of the nuke area and uh, safe area, you can just stay at the nuke area by dodging it with the forbidden area border and with a campfire. It's pretty easy to do, actually, and you should definitely use this trick. The second one is you definitely should change your arrow type. The normal arrows, the default arrows are definitely good but at the late game they are pretty useless to be honest the bonus five arrows you get that's that's not a big deal it's not anything extra because you can just chop down five trees and shoot with flame arrows that has like 50 damage more or any other arrows I prefer the berserker arrows just because if you hit one you can outrun your enemy you can change you can chase your enemy really good because it gives you um, unlimited stamina for 10 seconds or so so you should definitely change your arrow type from default the third one is killing deers uh, you probably knew this already but uh, deers can drop amazing loot sometimes they they can drop uh, smoke bombs they can drop traps they can drop resources they can drop arrows and the amount you get is actually pretty pretty huge for a deer for example like three arrows where does he keep them and he's yeah um the fourth is try to never run out of stamina and i find this really important and I, i'm trying to learn to do this all the time because when you run out of stamina, it needs to get recharged back to full stamina. And if you run out of stamina and then someone is behind you and you try to dodge their arrows, it's not that easy without stamina. So you should definitely have stamina all the times. You should never run it out because then you get that cooldown to charge it up fully. So it's not a good thing to run out of stamina ever also if you run out of stamina and someone shoots an arrow to you uh, maybe you jump one time and then your stamina is at zero again so that's really um really important thing to do never ever run out of stamina in this game okay then the fifth thing is try to always have an armor the armor is it's the best thing in the game like you should never run without an armor and you know what it, it does it blocks the first damage you take so it's pretty cool then the sixth is basically okay it's kind of like 5.5 but still six try to always have enough resources to build an armor because when you when you get shot or hit with an arrow, um, you can just hide and build another build another um, armor or shield or wh whatever you call it the shoulder pads armor thingy. <laughs> you should always have enough resources to do it. I always forgot to save resources for that, but you definitely should do it. Then. Seventh, we have go for the electronics and for first blood because from first blood you always get an electronic in this game. 
and with electronics you can build up uh, really good abilities and for example like teleport and shields and invisibilities and stuff like that. Uh, the electronics, there might be a fight at the electronic, but don't be scared of it. You really need the electronics to win the game, so you should definitely go for them all the time. Not all the time. If, if, if the electronic is like <sighs> at the other end of the map, you probably should not go for it. But if it's close, always go for the, for the electronic. Uh, eighth is learn how to use traps. Traps are really useful in this game. For example, if you're being chased, maybe just put a bear trap on uh, on your footstep tracks. So when the enemy is chasing after you, he will definitely get trapped and then you can shoot him easily and do like 300 damage with a headshot. Easy damage, easy kills. Traps are really useful. Okay, and then the ninth thing if the director talks, if he talks to you, always, always ask for yourself to be manhunted. Because manhunt is the best way to get resources. And also when the people are chasing you, you get kills when you put, up, put down traps. And it is just a really good way to get resources, kills, everything basically. Because people are going to hunt you down and... If you play it smart, if you camp in a cottage, for example, just put down traps and you get a lot of easy kills. And when you survive the manhunt, you get a ton of resources and armor and everything. This is all you can imagine. Okay, then the next thing. Train your aim. Your aim has to be really good. And remember, the arrows are not hit scan. The arrows actually fly and you have to lead your shots. And you can train this in the lobby, because there are these little metal balls flying on the air, thrusting away. And you can shoot them in the lobby. Remember, in the lobby. You can shoot them and they explode if you hit him. Uh, hit the ball. Blah, blah, blah. Hit the ball. So, just train your aim there. It's easy. You should do it. Then, the next one. Turn off harvest on me melee and clue auto look basically the harvest on melee just because if you are on electronic and you know that someone is close to you you can hit the electronic with your melee and fly away and you can escape and that's really good and clue auto look just because well at least i find it really annoying when i take a look uh, take a clue so when I'm trying to track someone and I take a clue and the camera just fucking flips around and you don't know anything anymore. Someone might shoot at you at the same point. Just take a clue and you can turn like spin around 360 and you know where the guy is. So basically the clue auto look is pretty much pointless. Okay, off to 12th point. Learn how to use boom shrooms and electronics. So basically the thing does, that I just said, if you hit an electronic, you can fly away, you can uh, defend yourself, you can escape with that. Also with the boom shrooms. Hitting the boom shroom, they are these little mushroom things, mechanical mushroom things on the map. And if you hit it with your axe, you fly far away. And you can really go fast on the map by doing this. And it it is a really good way to get around. Okay, the next one is play aggressive. Really guys, you don't win games if you just hide in bushes. Oh, well, very well, you might, but that's not a fun way to play the game now, isn't it? No, it's not. Play aggressive, gather loot and health from players you kill just kill people kill everyone you see always take the clues just hunt for those kills man when you kill people you get insane amount of resources insane amount of pleasure pleasure it, it's just just go for the kills man you get resources you get health you get everything from players you kill and that's the way to win win matches 
Okay, to the next one. Look at the radars constantly. Constantly look at the radars. Because that way you know where to look for the players you are about to kill. Because you're playing aggressive. Right? Am I right? Yes, I am right. Exactly. Okay. Then to the next one. My favorite build or my build I prefer. So here, crafting wheel. And um, okay, so I was trying this build out and I didn't quite get it how to play it because, well, I was trying it out. Scavenger Axe. Some pro players use Scavenger Axe just because they're killing so many people, they're hunting so many people down, so they need the health advantage with this. And also the Hunter Boots, so when you pick up clues you run insanely fast. And also the Track Arrows because... Actually, I don't know, does the Hunter Boots work with the Hunter Arrow? I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, well, anyways. My favorite build is, is it this one or this one? This one, yeah. And the axe sharpener. I'm not actually sure about the axe sharpener. Should I use the scavenger axe or the sharpener? It's really, what do you prefer? Use which one you like. But the sharpener is really good if you get it to the max level because you do 275 damage per one hit. Which is fucking amazing. And, uh, but although you don't really need it to go over um, 200 the damage, because that's already three shots, three shots, everyone. And um, 275, you also need three hits to kill someone. So it's basically pointless to upgrade it over two levels. Uh, and then scavenger axe, well if you're playing really 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 aggressive and you want to use the hunter boots then you probably should use scavenger axe just so you can heal. Alright, but I'm using the sharpener. Then with the cloak you want to use the runner cloak just because it it gives you um, well the same cult resistance as all the others except this one. but. Um, it gives you stamina, a lot of stamina, so you can jump, you can run around really fast. I mean, not really fast, but a really long time. And it's just all around really, really good item to have. You can just run away, run away. The next ones are ninja boots. Um, this is really like, you can use pretty much every one of these. I used... Um, evader boots also because I leave tracks so much that it's really good to have or I mean being tracked and run really fast so even though if someone is chasing me and tracking me I can uh, outrun them and also chase them if they're tracking me but the ninja boots are pretty much like a all-around good boots so, Hunter Boots are also good, but I prefer the 4 regular movement speed bonus, so I'm using the Ninja Boots. Then with the abilities, these are important ones. So, Energy Shield is pretty good, because you are basically unkillable for uh, 10 seconds, although your knockback is double. So. Uh, when you are at the end zone, the sudden death, and someone hits you with an axe, uh, he definitely hits a fucking home run, dude. You fly far away, but you're unkillable. So if you just position yourself right and you use the shield, you should be fine. It is really all around really good ability, and you should definitely use it. The next one we have here is teleport. Um, teleport and power leap are pretty much the same, but with power leap you leap only 30 meters. But with teleport you leap 100 meters. And with teleport you can init initiate a fight 
you can escape really good, you can get around really fast on the map. It's just all around really good um, mobility item. So definitely use the teleport. For the last one, I prefer radar just because I can see traps and people. So uh, like through the walls, it's really good. I love it. I totally love it. Some people prefer camo just because if you're being, I mean, if someone uses radar, you cannot see camo. Uh, camo is basically invisible, invisibility, but it's just like this heat radi radiation um, invisibility so people can still see you and I feel that it's pretty pointless to have invisibility if you are still like easy to see if it's still easy to see you when you're invisible so I don't really find a point to having this but well some people prefer it then other one other good one is camo I mean arena you make a huge bubble around yourself and uh, people are trapped in for the duration of the arena and if you are certain that you are better than other player you definitely should pick this up because it is really easy to just trap them and kill them in the arena when they cannot escape although if you have an energy shield against the arena you're like half of the time unkillable and you're like it's easy for you to kill him if he doesn't have the energy shield so yeah well i prefer this build i prefer this build it's really good build and i'm running it so you should definitely give it a try if you don't like it just build your build your build that sounds stupid well build your build however you like it but you should definitely change the default ones because the default ones ain't that good the runner cloak is definitely a must it's the best cloak definitely in the game okay off to the traps bird trap is all around really really good it it costs nothing to make basically it does 150 damage it is really good it stuns your enemy basically immobilize it's it's just really good it is really good then the smoke bomb is actually really interesting thing uh, if someone is tracking you it cancels the tracking and it hides your footprints and it's also like a smoke bomb so you cannot see very much in it it's really good also it's amazing I love it then the snowball the snowball is pretty good because it's a ranged attack and it does like 30 damage well the damage is pretty much pointless but you can make your enemies take the cold damage much more than normally so it's good you should definitely use this one too and you can make uh, snowballs I think as much as you want so it's good and also it has a little knockback so basically if some guy is running out of a forbidden zone you can push them back in with the snowball and they start taking insanely big amounts of cold damage and that's just an easy kill for you so snowballs are good well that is my build and tips and tricks for you guys to be pro players in Darwin project I hope you guys learned something new from this video and I hope you really like the game I absolutely love the game it's amazing it must be the greatest game ever made I just love it I cannot get enough of it and have a good one